Welcome to Beyond Our Focus. I'm Seth, and this is Amanda, and this is Let's Palaver About the Gunslinger, Chapter 3, The Oracle and the Mountains. So, we're going to jump right in. I don't ever say this, because it's, I might just there will be spoilers for this chapter. We're just going over it. It's going to happen. <laughs> we're talking about everything about this chapter, trying our darndest not to say anything about future chapters or books. Yes. Some things might slip in a little bit, but it won't be big spoilers for sure. There'll be minor, little tiny things, hopefully. <laughs> yes, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we have, we desperately want to talk about future yeah. parts, especially with some stuff brought up in this chapter. Oh, there are some things that would be lots of fun to talk about. There's lots. Oh! Oh, there's so much. So much there's, foreshadowing there's of just, future books. There's too much. There is. Okay, so, once again, we start off and... He has another. He all, Stephen King always has a profound way to start his chapters. Like the first line is always either foreshadowing or just a really good line. Yeah, and this one's very much foreshadowing because that's just what King does. It seems the man likes to foreshadow everything. Yes. So this time it is the boy found the oracle and it almost destroyed him. It's like, all right, <laughs> we, we, we don't know what's going on. And then we just immediately jump back and then we find out how this happens. So it's like, King, could you just not lead into it? <laughs> like, oh my God, where's Jake? Yes, and us what? be like, we don't know either. What's going on? No. What happened three weeks ago? What? <laughs> no, instead, yes. we, we find that he finds some oracle and he's almost destroyed. So pretty much just the beginning, the opening is just their, what is it, ascent up the mountain? Yeah, it's been a little time since the, in the last chapter. It seems we've skipped a little while. Yes. We've made it into the mountains, and or maybe not quite to the mountains. We were more in like the forest area before the mountains, it yeah. seems. Um, but yeah, they literally, he literally has the descriptions of them, the dead grass dropping away, everything getting greener, everything getting brighter, the smells getting fresher, and obviously Jake's getting ex excited, Roland's getting excited, but Roland's proud of Jake because he's not just running off like a normal no, you know, child would. He mentions that he could possibly one day become a gunslinger, yes. given enough time. <sighs> It might start with foreshadowing, and then it just yes. immediately moves to, like I think, like the next page. Yes, it said, The gunslinger remained calm in his mind, and the boy had kept up at least the pretense of a facade, and that had made the gunslinger proud. He likes the boy. Yeah. He loves the boy. Like he was supposed to. Um, anyway. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <sighs> So my first note was about the sucker bats and okay. the vampires. Yes, the vampires. It's because like, hmm. it's a strange thing to bring up in a Western world for someone to be like, for someone to joke like even in our world about, oh, the, in the dark the vampires are going to get you. <laughs> but he legitimately seems concerned that there's vampires oh, yeah. in the dark. <laughs> Some vampires, they, they will get you. Like, the bats might break the boy's sleep, no matter how deep it was. And if there were vampires, neither of them might wake, awaken. At least, not in this world. Yes. So I was like, oh, just, just casually throw the word vampire in there. Oh, yeah. Not a big deal. I can't even tell you if it gets brought up again in any of the following books up until a particular one. And it's just weirdly that it's here. Yes. It is. It's a very strange because it's one of those just... Random brought up, random mention, and then it's like, move on. Just move on. continue. Don't worry about vampires again. Yeah. Well, like, we'll get back to those eventually. Don't worry about just, it. Yeah, we, there's not only, you know, plenty of woods between you and the man in black, but let's only worry about vampires this this one. It's once. one time, not the other nights, not anything else. Don't let one break. Th nothing. Just... Yeah. But immediately after that, of course, you know, <laughs> uh, Roland or Jake pretty much... Is like, okay, I'll go get some wood for the fire. And Roland's like, no, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. Sit yourself. Interesting way of putting it. Yes. Jake, whose phrase had that been? Some woman. Susan? We hear of Susan again. Yes. Which is not in the original. That just stops at some woman. 
Some woman just. Yes. A quote that I do like is that times the thief of memory. Hmm. It truly is. It times the thief of memory, and it it really really is. I mean, it's very it's it's a very true statement. Yes. Very kind of poetically said, but it's a very true statement. The yes. longer we go on, the more we tend to forget. Certain things stand out. Our mind changes some things to be yeah. a little different as we and go further. Yes, and that's the difficult thing is that how much how much of us memory remembering our past now is actually a hundred percent true. And how much of your memory is based off of pictures. Yes. Because that happens too. You see something, you think you remember the event, but you what you really you remember the picture of the yes. event and not necessarily the, the event itself. Yes. And so the boy sat. <laughs> the boy sat because he wasn't going to have Jake going out in these woods. Yeah. With these the vampires. vampires. And sucker bats. And sucker bats. Um, I would like to have seen a sucker bat. I mean, what is this thing? Well, being that they have a lot of unique ways to describe animals and stuff that Might just be a bat. already exist. <laughs> yeah. It could be a vampire bat. Yeah. And that's why but those he's are friendly. worried about vampires. I'm thinking fruit bat, not vampire bat. I don't want to talk about it. It's all right. <laughs> You're thinking of a fruit bat. Uh, they're the same thing, okay? They're the so, same thing. Oh, my, you have you seen. <laughs> yes, you have seen them. Okay. Oh. Um, also in that same area is, yeah. when I originally read, the gunslinger smiled. No, you won't. Sit to yourself, Jake. I immediately thought, is that in the original? Because Roland doesn't have much personality. Yes, he does, but the following thing that you had brought up is yeah. not. So as the gunslinger snorted laughter, the first in God knows how long, and set the fire and went after water. Yeah. It's about the, some little praying mantis being on Jake's head. Yes. <laughs> that was funny to him, which definitely isn't like no, you said. Not in the old books. It's, no. He, in the older books, he has a more... What is it? Stoic personality. He's just he 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 shows some compassion. He does so some ca- some forms of caring, but as far as outright just yeah, he, yeah, he's not that way generally. And the newer version of the book definitely paints him in a nicer, kinder light. Yes, you you tend to be able to sympathize and like Roland more. Yeah. My next thing that I marked was the next page and the giant thing about Susan and his past. Mine is actually on the same page. Um, and it was... Let's see. Last paragraph. Okay. It says, But the we stay here tomorrow, the gunslinger said. But the man you're after, that priest, he's no priest. And don't worry, he'll keep... How do you know that? The gunslinger could only shake his head. The intuition was strong in him, but it was not a good intuition. Don't need that pin. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, it's not a good intuition. It was like that, that not a good intuition. I'm just like, there you go with your thing and you're doing stuffs and I don't like it. And you just get... He keeps bringing up the fact that as he's getting closer to the man in black, he's feeling less and less like he wants to. Yeah, well, and Jake made that even more so. Yeah. Which, again, was the point. Yes. The man in black has done this. He he is making him do these things. Oh, I know, it's terrible. It's yes. terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. The, la- the next thing I have written down is 136 through 137, The Dream. And mine's 126 through 127. <laughs> At least it's the same, you know, somewhat. So, yes, which I, yeah, I just marked for two pages because I did too. it was huge. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, not a spot. It is like this giant section in here. Yeah. Yeah, I just put new about Susan. Yes. <laughs> which apparently not completely new. Some new. We we'll get about yeah. what, like we, a, maybe half a page is more. We get an uh, we get a glimpse into this dream that he is having about Susan. Susan Delgado. Susan Delgado. And how she is dying before his eyes. She has been strapped to the... Again, um, just massive yes. foreshadowing. Yes. No illusion of anything about what's going to happen. 
Just this terrible, terrible thing. Is it really considered foreshadowing if it's in his past, though? But still, <laughs> if you're going you're gonna to write a whole book about it. <laughs> I just realized. Pausing for a moment. Technically, to the people reading for the first time, this could have been a dream. Like, they literally could be thinking, he's just dreaming that someone he used to love this happened to. He could. He could. But I we know it. that But he's mentioned this before, again. though. Asking? No. I mean, oh. he mentions that everyone's dead, but he doesn't mention how or why or what or anything. Well, we have a very vivid dream. We know it's true. Okay. They'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um... So, yes, he's being held back while his love is being burned alive pretty much in front of him. Yeah. Because that's not intense. <laughs> does, does he mention all the names? Like, is Rhea in the old version? Ray is oh, not. Rhea? Uh, Ray, Rhea, I don't Rhea, know. Rhea, Rhea, whatever her name I is. I need to get the companion guide because they actually have the pronunciation. I'm sure they do. I just say Rhea. That's what uh, yeah. it looks like to me. Um, but they don't mention her. I don't even think they mention the vill villagers going, uh, like, uh, chair you tree, chair you tree. Chair you tree. Yeah. Chair you tree. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, nothing like that. It's Rhea just the, witch. the description of her burning and then her going, the boy. She was screaming, Roland, the boy. The boy. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> In which case... Uh, the dream changes, kind of. He turns and up in a window that he used to see Susan looking down. And he mentions this window a couple of times throughout the mm -hmm. like earlier chapters. But he looks up and Jake's standing there staring down at the window like she used to. But he has a nail through his forehead. Yeah, a spike had been driven through Jake's forehead. I said it a lot more nice than yeah. <laughs> This uh, gunslinger felt the... Sh String, strangling, ripping scream that sing, uh, signaled the beginning of his <laughs> lunacy pull up from the bottom of his belly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. So, how would you like to wake up with the feeling that your hand is on fire? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. Roland grunted a cry as he felt the fire singe him. Yeah. So, if anyone has ever had this happen while they were camping, I think I've gotten close to it, but not literally. But he pretty much, in his thrashing, in his dream, stuff like that, he threw his hand out and it landed in the coals of the fire. That, that, that can't be fun. No. That cannot be good or fun or nice or... So that that sure enough would be enough to wake anybody up. No, no, no! You're <laughs> awake. You're awake. You need to get your hand out of the flame. Yes. So he wakes up and he pretty much just all he can picture still is his nightmare, and he still hears that noise, that mm yeah. noise. And so he's looking around. He has his guns out. He's ready to go, and he. he he doesn't even look around for Jake. He just kind of feels that Jake is missing. Like, he just knows that he's missing. There's something I was going to mention that I just thought was funny. He had thrown, in the previous thing, in his dream. Yes. Who had taught him to be a man and once sat and sung the old song, Hey Jude. <laughs> I just thought it was like, oh, there's Hey Jude again. That darn it's song just keeps popping up. Ka. It is Ka. And it's that old, old song. Mm -hmm. Which, again, it kind of puts us where we are in this this world. Yes. It... Oh my goodness, yes. Which makes me feel ancient. But, um... So, yes. He runs out into the dark and hunts of Jake. I like how he hunts him. <laughs> Because yeah. I wrote down Roland the Hound Dog. Yes, because he's like, neither of them smell good, smelled good, or neither of them smelled good. He could smell him. Yeah, he could smell him, which was funny. Like a nostril furred like an ape. <laughs> the younger, lighter odor of the boy's sweat was faint, oily, unmistakable. Like, 
Robo, I didn't He's know you. He's a gunslinger. Come you on. had this ability just to literally sniff people out. <laughs> you get trained to do things. Okay? I guess so. Let's go through gunslinger training. Except not with court. No, no, God, no. Let's, please, let's not do it with court. I, I, one of the main reasons why I do like Stephen King's books, though, is his descriptions. Yes, sometimes they go on for a long time, but I just love the weird ways he gets to describe just everything. Everything from trees to how grass looks. He just comes up with these wild just explanations and descriptions for how they look how they do. So it's like Moss struck his shoulders like flabby corpse hands. Like, it's just... Like, sure, that's that's what everyone knows that feeling. <laughs> it's just great. Like, he just comes up with such imaginative ways to describe things in all all, all the books, all his books in general. Well, most all his books, if not almost all of his books, are all very fantasy-based. Yes. So he's a good... But he has lots of places to play and do whatever he wants <laughs> with it. Uh, the next thing I have written down is him actually walking into the clearing. So, oh, I think I'm right after. It says he didn't think about what he was doing when he pulled yeah, the that's what I have. half rot, uh, rotten jawbone from his pocket where he had carried it. So, since. yeah. So pretty much he breaks through this clearing or breaks into this clearing. There's what looks like what are the stones called? The like Stonehenge or something? Yes, it looks like, pretty much, it looks like the stone the Stonehenge. There's stones in a circle, and there's a flat table-like stone right in the middle. Mm-hmm. He sees Jake standing next to it in some kind of weird trance. Yeah. And just bolts into the clearing without thinking about it. And then we get some interesting descriptions, and... And that's pretty much, like, at first he walks in, he gets this feeling... That he's going to be entrapped too, and that's when he pulls out the jawbone and does the whole psychiness. Yes, the warding, uh, warding off the evil eye. Yeah, this this darn jumbo can do a lot. It seems. Apparently, well, it says uh, I had it written down too on the other one, like. But it was pretty much like what what he said when he grabbed the jawbone, like why he took it. It was something like uh, jaw. The, the, well, the only dead man can speak prophecy. Yes, and... there you go, right there. So it's like here you have the corpse or. So a what you're jaw saying, bone. if we ever go on a great adventure, gotta have a jawbone. Yes. Human jawbone. Yes. Not sure we're finding one, or we have to acquire one on not so great terms. But apparently, yes. we need one. To ward off demons, demons, we need a jawbone. Well, but it's a jawbone that had to have spoken to us. Sweet, sweet Christmas. <laughs> yes. Um, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to find. Uh, but yes, we we are we're definitely adding that to our checklist. When we go on our, our ghost hunts, we'll have to make sure we have it. I believe it. <gasps> oh. Easily possessed. Um. But yes, warving off the evil eye. And I can't remember, isn't it? Uh... He does that. <laughs> what was that on? That, uh, what I know it from is um, um, Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> That's why I remember him doing it. He's doing this whole thing. <laughs> and brings down the, 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 the wild hog or something. That's what I remember it from, okay? I was thinking of more like any anything with like witches and cults and stuff. On <laughs> I can't tell you these what I have. I was thinking of like, on, isn't it on Silent Hill? Like when she gets to the church or whatever. I could have swore the old ladies like you know. I haven't played the original witch. Silent Hill or oh, the did, movie. I don't barely remember the movie. Oh, forget it. I wasn't impressed with the movie. I liked the first one. I didn't like <laughs> the second one. I really liked the first one, but um. 140. So, he pretty much... Do you have anything in that area still? I don't know what your 140 is. My Well, no, I meant like in the area of him going to get Jake. Uh, I have one more thing. It just him bring, bring up Susan again. Hmm? 
He hugged the kid, put a dry kiss on his cheek, knowing that he loved oh, him. Oh, okay. Well, See, that mine's on the next page. That's yeah. why I asked. I, yeah, I'm not positive, but maybe it wasn't quite right. Maybe the truth is that he loved the kid from the moment he had seen him, as he had Susan. Yes, and was now no, allowing him. himself to recognize the fact, for it was a fact. Good old Susan Delgado. And it seemed that he could almost feel the laughter from the man in black someplace far above them. I'm sure he could. I'm sure. Ah, the darn man in black. Can we just throw a jawbone at him? <laughs> yes. Now, this is one I did not look up in the original, but I wanted to before we started. And so if you want to... Uh... Where are we? The next one I have is on page 143. So that's a couple pages away. So it's just him talking to... Before that, it's him talking to Jake about how he has to go. Pretty much he... Yeah. Let's up, I have a little bit before that about him tying Jake up. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. You go right over there. Go right ahead while you look stuff up. Yes. Yeah, we have it tied Jake up, which was right here. Jake calling him awoke. He tied Jake firmly to one of the tough bushes that grew nearby. And the boy was hungry and upset by the sun... It was almost 9.30. Why'd you tie me up, Jake asked, as the gunslinger loosened a thick knot in the blanket. It wasn't, I wasn't going to run away. You did run away, the gunslinger said, <laughs> and an expression on Jake's face made him smile. I had to go out and get you. You were sleepwalking. I was. So that's one little thing. Good old Jake. I had no idea what happened. Probably for the best. And then the very bottom, I uh, had to bring this back up again because it was that wor uh, word again. Where was it? Where was it? I'm sure it's the same page. Yeah, it says it's here. It's just blind. Listen to me. What happened? We don't have time to palaver now. Yeah. I have to go <laughs> off for a while. I may be gone a whole day. So listen to me, boy. It's... Important. If sunset comes and I'm not back, fear flashed on Jack's face. You're leaving me? <laughs> yeah, he is. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. Yeah. Jump on a little bit further. Okay. Did you find what you're looking for? Yes, I did. I assume it's different. Yes, it is. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, it's foreshadowing that he decided not to put in the old one. Of course. Of course. Yes. Okay. So, he, uh, <laughs> pretty much he told, uh, what is it? He told Jake that he had to go, and then he said, here's the job bone. Like, this will pretty much keep you safe. Don't. Mm -hmm. you, I'm going to leave it next to you if you need it. Hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Well, then it says... Okay. So he talks about how uh, Jake is at first kind of scared, weary, everything, and then suddenly, like, a, just gets this steel look in his eyes, like, all right, I'll be fine, kind of thing. And... He lets the kid go back to sleep and sits there, thinks about the demon, thinks about everything. And then it says, The gunslinger opened his tobacco poke and pawed through it, pushing the dry strands of leaf aside until he came to a minuscule object wrapped in a fragment of white paper. He rolled it between fingers that would all too soon be gone and looked absently up at the sky. You know, I didn't remember, re I, didn't, I don't remember reading that, but you, oh my... And, uh, Are you why? Not in the original. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it wasn't. <sighs> why? Why do that? <laughs> I don't know. Fragments of white paper he wrote between his fingers. That would oh my god! So this guy. Well, why? 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 Why put that in there? <laughs> I don't know. You didn't need to be in there. I it know really Rob. Didn't. Uh, it really did. He loves to just throw. Source of foreshadowing. Stay like, oh, stuff. Yes. I read, even when 
when I was reading through the book. Like, this was one of my main problems with the series, is that while you're reading it, each chapter, there's so much foreshadowing that by the time you get to the next book, you're like, I don't want to read it. Like, <laughs> you're like, this person, that person, what's going to happen here? He's already hinted at this. Like, I... He, yeah. a lot. He, he likes to foreshadow a lot of stuff. That was one of the main reasons why I could not make it to the last book the first time. Oh, that last book. There was just so much foreshadowing that I was like, nope, nope, so. Uh, but he was going into his, uh, his, whatever, his poke, or whatever it was yes. called, going for this drug. Mescaline. Mescaline. What is it? It's just, it's uh, kind of like... Oh, I mean, actually, is I it something we that. could um, relate it to? Well, Jake is, describes it as LSD. Anyway, he describes it as LSD. Well, it could be... I can, I can. It, LSD, acid... Uh, yeah, he just... It's, he's, not, it's not... It's. I wouldn't consider it like heroin or... Yeah, it heightens ecstasy, the sense... Maybe? maybe? I don't know. I think, I'm not positive, but every other drug later on, he's really bad at pronouncing things... So, I think what aspirin is Aston or yes. something. Yes. Aston. So it could be anything. Yeah. I was just curious. Maybe we know what it is. I'm sure it's something we're familiar with. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure it is. Watch us. Watch it actually be a thing. Actually, be a drug. <laughs> no, it might be. I don't. I don't recognize the word. But. Well, you can tell how much you know. We're into that world. <laughs> Sorry, we're not really down on all our drugs lately. So. No, no, we haven't. Um, which is weird because, okay, so he takes this drug. Uh, Jake's, of course, you know, questioning on him, like, is it going to hurt you, everything like that. He's pretty much just like, it's fine, leave it alone. So, but the funny thing is, is he takes it, and the first thing he decides to do is fix Jake's shirt. Well, he said he has some time well or something. yeah but i mean like that's a random thing to jake yeah. take off your shirt and let me because i wrote like, down <laughs> the, the shirt thing because i was like oh you're just chilling there <laughs> squatting in front of the you just skin. take a drug you sit in front of your fire and then you just decide that you want to sew some sew a rip open or sew a rip yeah. closed he reholstered the then he said your shirt jake take it off and give it to me jake pulled his faded we're looking over his head revealing the skinny the gunslinger produced a needle that had been threaded into the side of his jeans and thread for the empty cartridge loop into the gun belt and began to sew up a long rip in one of the sleeves of the boy's shirt. As he finished, he handed the shirt back and felt it. Just, yeah, it's interesting. It was just a weird thing to throw in there. Yeah, just, it's just, so just, just sewed a shirt up. Chilling out, doing drugs, sewing things, just... It's like, I got a few minutes, got to wait for the drugs to kick in, but until then, we'll sew your shirt. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, yeah, I wrote it down because it just seemed a little weird and out of place. Um, my next note is on the Manny Pook. Good old Manny. I don't know where that is. Mine's like uh, two pages further, so. Mine's one, uh, 146. Mine's 135. And it was just, this first came from the Manny Pook. So pretty much what happened between him fixing the shirt and everything is that the drug finally kicked in and he wanders off towards the clearing again. He, the drug started to, he's starting to see things. Things are starting to be more... Yeah, it definitely... It just sounds like a drug. <laughs> <laughs> it, the one, my favorite one as far as like him, him tripping and describing oh, yeah. things. Mine's literally right after the manic yeah. book. Mine, uh, my favorite description is the grass screamed green at him. It seemed that if he bent over and rubbed his hands in it, he would stand up with green paint all over his fingers and palms. He resisted a puckish urge to try the experiment. <laughs> nah, I would have. <laughs> I would have turned a roll and then the grass. Uh, yeah. This is leaf. Yeah. Will it paint on me? <laughs> Pretty much just like war paint. Uh, a line of old poetry occurred to him. No nursery voice now no his mother had feared the drugs and the necessity of them as she had feared court and the need for his beater of boys the first came from the many folk to the north of the desert a clan of them still living among the machines that usually didn't work and which sometimes ate the men that did that they did 
The lines played again and again, reminding him, in an unconnected way, that that was typical of masculine rush. A snow falling in a globe he had it as a child. Mystic, mystic and half fantastical? Fantastical. Fantastical, sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> beyond the reach of human ring, range, a drop of hell, a touch of strange. <laughs> so... The first thing that I thought was kind of cool was the snow falling in a globe he had owned. I was like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like another little touch tone. It's like weird things that, I guess, survive. Yeah. Whatever happened between our world and his. So, it's good to know snow globes are still around. They, they, they somehow <laughs> stuck around. Um, oh. I got that. Yeah, my next one's two more pages forward, so... Mine is, yes, <laughs> um, pretty much so, just jumping forward, he is thinking about all these things, He's, he walks into the clearing, obviously, he walks into the Stonehenge area, he lays down on the altar because he doesn't hear or feel or see or anything mm -hmm. as far as the demon yet, so he lays down and just lets his mind wander. And then that's when he hears its presence. Yes, this thing, which I guess he, he never actually really sees. Yes. It's because it puts things into his head. Like it sees, she, he sees it as Susan. He sees it as just everything, pretty much. And for some reason, him and finding these things that need things from him. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll just, yeah. It's like, hey, I need to know things from you. And it's like, I want, I, I, I want you. Yeah. <laughs> the price of information is sex. It always is. Allie, uh, Sylvia, is it Sylvia? Sylvia, what's her face? I don't know. Yeah, but that got mentioned with her, and now this demon. Yes. Well, this demon is a succubus, so that makes sense. Still, it couldn't be any other type of demon. <laughs> And we will have another demon later on. I don't know. It's just... That's the same way. Which, oh God, that leads to so much. Shut your face. Oh! Shut your face. Okay. So, uh... In some weird, weird ways. Shh. You're not allowed to talk anymore, okay? This is silent cast. Oh, um, so much. Okay, so he's it's sitting there talking to him. It pretty much says, I want you, and he says, I want information first. Mm-hmm. And it pretty much begs for him, and he's like, I want information first. So, finally, you know, it gives in. And the one thing I wrote down is... It wasn't... There it is. You get... A sense of what happened to the world. Like, right before she actually goes into her prophecy, the gunslinger is going into this half sleep. Half sleep. And it says, A play was being enacted, therefore his, there for his amusement. Worlds rose and fell before him. Empires were built across shining sands where forever machines toiled in abstract electronic frenzy. Empires declined, fell, rose again. Wheels that had spun like silent liquid moved more slowly, began to squeak, began to scream, stopped. Sand choked the stainless steel gutters of concentric streets below dark skies full of stars like beds of cold jewels. And through it all, a dying wind of change blew, bringing with it the cinnamon smell of late October. The gunslinger watched as the world moved on. So it's almost, almost like you, he saw, he saw how it all happened. Yeah, it's, but it's a very brief, yes. very non-specific yeah, well, yeah, what happened. We, it's not like apocalypse now. Like just. Yeah, a little touch. And but it's, it's almost as though, you know, most apocalypse things that happen, there was a huge event, like whether it was 
you know, meteor or zombies or anything like that. And then from what he just saw, from what you kind of get a glimpse, it's almost as if the world kept going in cycle so many times that it finally just burned itself out and just got yeah. lost to the desert. I have my own theory, which I think is best discussed in another book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> well, yeah. Anyways. Um, and half slept. Yes. But that is the one thing that I put before she goes into her prophecy. Good old prophecy, because that was the very next thing. Which starts, yeah, half slept. Three. This is the number of your fate. Three? Yes, three is mystic. Three stands at the heart of your quest. Another number comes later. Now, the number is three. Which three? Hmm. Mine goes to the next page. We see in part, and thus, in the mirror prophecy, darkened. Tell me what you can. The first is young, dark-haired. He stands on the brink of robbery and murder. A demon has infected him. The name of the demon is heroin. Sorry. Which we love. Yes. Because it starts describing no, I... things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't love heroin. Let's go no. back there real quick. Heroin. <laughs> we love the heroin. Okay. Just got super excited there. You're like, heroin. We love heroin. Yes, heroin. We love the character yes. of which... We love the character heroin. That's yes, the character of heroin. Uh, so we love the characters there kind of describing. We love what's coming. The future of the book series. Yes. That's what we love. Uh, which demon is that? I know it not, even from my tutor's lessons. We see in part, and thus, in the mirror of prophecy, darkens. Or darkened. There are other worlds, Gunslinger, and other demons. These waters are deep. Watch for the doorways. Watch for the roses and the unfound doorways. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But yes, uh... What was I going to say? Hmm. Oh. Whenever she says, we see in part, and thus is the mirror of prophecy darkened, it pretty much just means... The same as, I'm sorry, I can't see any further. <laughs> it's kind of like in iRobot when he is asking the, uh, what is it called? Hologram? They said that was called hologram. I mean, there's, there's such things as holograms. I don't yes. remember what part you're talking about in okay. iRobot. Well, the, the guy that died who committed suicide mm -hmm. his, is that a hologram. Yes. Sure. Okay. Either way, when he asks it pretty much like, Hey, why did the why did you kill yourself or something? And he goes, "You must ask the right questions." That's mm -hmm. that's pretty much the gist of why. Yeah, I mean, she says apparently, in parts. I can't see everything. I don't yes. know everything. I know some things. We trying to see if some of this was the same or? No, I was bringing up the second. There you go. Okay, so whenever you want okay. to move on. Uh, the second, she comes on wills. I see no more. And this is the one thing... Very short. Yes. This is the one thing, but between the original version and the newer version that I was kind of like... Why shorten it? Yes. Why shorten it? Because in the old one is, she comes on wheels. Her mind is iron, but her heart and eyes are soft. I see no more. Why would you remove that? I mean, I see no reason to remove that. I, I don't either. I also don't see any reason why the prophecy for the second. So tiny. Yes. It's like the first one, so much, you actually, it's like, this is cool, we get a sense of something. Second one, she comes on wheels. <laughs> really? So really? she's going to be on a bicycle. That's we right. got this. That's the only explanation. Yes. No other possible. Nope. Uh, the third, death. But not for you, the man in black. Where is he? Near. You will speak with him soon. Of what will we speak? The tower? The boy? Jake? Tell me the boy. The boy is your gate to the man in black. The man in black is your gate to the three. The three are your way to the dark tower. How? How can that be? Why must it be? We see in part, and thus is the mirror. Yes. Is something different, or are you just no. this in general? Just this entire thing in general. <laughs> it makes me sad. It's very true. 
But yeah, the only difference in this one is the third in chains. The man in black, where is he? Near. You will speak with him. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same. Yeah, but the next thing, on the next page, which we also discussed, I, can, I may have this pretty little picture here of Roland sitting by the water with the stone hinge behind him. <laughs> yes, that was from earlier, before he got there, when he saw his reflection and was staring at it. Yes! He had a moment of ego. Um, my next one was, let's see, it was pretty much right, right after that, where he goes... Yeah, I think we have the same thing, so... Yes. Yes. Wait, are do we? Mine was, uh... Mine is, may he not be spared. Oh, no, mine is not. Mine is actually right before that. It's... The prophecy, the demon says, Some live on love that comes to the ancient places, even in these sad and evil times. Some, gunslinger, live on blood. Even I understand on the blood of young boys. And then that's when he says, or may he not be spared. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, here's right before that. Directly before that. Yes, directly. <laughs> may he not be spared? Yes. How? Cease, gunslinger. Strike your camp and turn back northwest. In the Northwest, there is still a need for men who live by the bullet. I am sworn by my father's guns and by the, the treachery of Martin. Martin is no more. The man is black, has eaten his soul. This you know. I am sworn. Then you are damned. I quit. Uh, we wouldn't have a series if Grohl just turned back and was like a bounty hunter or something. I know, but still, <laughs> when someone when someone this early on says "cease gunslinger," you're like, "Roland, get the fuck out!" <laughs> Turn around, man! <laughs> Don't keep going. Uh, even even reading this for the first time, as anybody just reading it, picking it up, with all the foreshadow going on, with especially you know like you know, can the voice be spared? By the time you hear someone says, hey, yeah, if you can, just just stop what you're doing, turn around and leave. Yeah. You're going to be like, do it. <laughs> but no, he's... Of course not. It's Roland. Of course not, it's Roland. He's not... This is all he is. Yes, and mine is pretty much right after that, when Roland comes back. What? He... Mine's a little bit further than yours, oh. I think. Well, he pretty much, like, he... Gets a, the demon that has her way with him, whatever. Yes. Pushes her off, and then leaves and heads back to camp for Jake. So Jake sees him and is automatically like, "Oh my goodness, you're sick!" And Roland's like, "Now I'm just tired, pretty much." I'm tired. Yes. I've had a long, long, grueling time here. Yes. But then it says, uh, What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> um, okay. It says, Now he ran toward the gunslinger with a look of distress that made Roland feel the full, ugly weight of a coming betrayal. Yes. My God, more foreshadowing. We get it already. Yes. And then he says, uh, He rolled a cigarette with careful, unthinking slowness. Jake watched. The gunslinger had a sudden impulse to speak to the boy, Da Den, after telling him all he had learned, then thrust the idea away with horror. He wondered if a part of him, mind or soul, might not be disintegrating. To open one's mind and heart to the command of a child, that idea was insane. Ah, oh, Roland. Could you imagine if he did turn it? He, if he was just like, Jake, let me level with you. <laughs> Well, I mean, we get a little bit leveling here in a minute. Yeah. That leveling <laughs> that comes true. very soon. Which, funny enough, mine, all I wrote was page 153, and I literally just wrote, ugh. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't <laughs> write notes, I didn't write specifics, I just wrote page 153, and then ugh. Yeah. Uh, my next one is, said, we sleep here tonight, tomorrow we start climbing. I'll go out a little later and see if I can shoot something for supper. We need to make strength. I've got 
to sleep now, okay? Sure. Knock yourself out. I don't understand you. <laughs> that was cute. What do you want? Ah, oh, the gunslinger nodded and lay back. Knock myself out, he thought. Knock myself out. Uh, <laughs> this is an interesting term. We get it. And he's oh, like, yeah. what? Just, what do you mean knock? What? What do you expect of me? Like, get a rock? What are we doing? <laughs> but, uh... Mine, pretty much the reason why I had wrote uh, was the gunslinger walked toward the willow grove and then stopped at the sound of the boy's voice, stopped dead. Spark a dark, where's my sire? The boy murmured, and Roland heard the sharp chick, chick, chick of the flint. It sounded like the cry of a small mechanical bird. Will I lay me? Will I stay me? Bless this camp with fire. Yep, that was my next thing too that I wrote down. And it's just like, the reason why I wrote ugh on this entire page is because you just feel how close they've gotten. You just feel how much Jake cares for him and that he cares for Jake. Yep. And that's a... Roland, Roland. Because the very next thing is just also dealing with this. So he picked it up from me, the gunslinger thought. Not in the least surprised to discover he was all over Goosebump. And on the verge of shivering like a wet dog, picked it up for me. Words I don't even remember saying. And will I betray such? Ah, Roland, will thee betray such true thread as this in the sad, unthieved world? Could anything justify it? Roland! Roland! Yes. And I said... Yar, or Roland, the boy called. Are you all right? And he's like, Yar, these made fire. Yes, the boy said simply. And Roland did not need to turn to know the boy was smiling. Roland, why, Roland, why? Yeah. So, mine's not till a couple pages later, but. Uh, my next one was the very next page. I just nice little word. Where was it though? Uh, it's just he felt caught at work yeah. on the surface and things and no longer considered it odd. But his intuition was that the climb would be not particularly difficult one. Yeah. Good old Ka. Good old sometimes terrible Ka. Yes. And this is another one that I wanted to check, but it's fine. But it was uh pretty much they're talking about moving on, going up the mountain now, and Jake said, it's all so old, Jake said glumly when they paused for, the, for a rest. Isn't there anything young in this world? The gunslinger smiled and gave Jake an elbow. You are, he said. Jake responded with a, 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 a wan, wan, wan smile. I can't talk today. Will it be hard to climb? The gunslinger looked at him curious. The mountains are high. Don't you think it will be hard to climb? But mine was... The gunslinger smiled and gave Jake an elbow. It's like, I was curious to know if that was in the old one. Like, Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> I wrote that too. So Roland smiled and gave Jake an elbow. Yeah. It's like, oh, him just being... Oh, pally pally. Uh, bitch. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> will you betray this, Roland? Will you? We have so, the answer. Yeah. So they continue to climb, and they're getting closer and closer, they feel. Yeah, mine. Jumps a couple more pages. Mine was the last line, and it said, uh, pretty much they had gotten to a, a cave, crevice, whatever you want to call it, in the side of the mountain, and they had decided to pretty much camp there, so Jake had his legs swung over the edge. They're kind of just sitting there talking, and Jake, it says, Jake dangled his feet over the drop. The gunslinger rolled his evening smoke and eyed Jake half humorously, which is another one. Um... Don't roll over in your sleep, he said, or you may wake up in hell. I was like, well, that's pleasant. <laughs> um, and then he said, I won't, Jake replied seriously. My mother says, he broke off. She says what? That I sleep like a dead man. Yeah. Jake finished. I do remember that. And then that entire paragraph right there. Right after it. I don't know which... It's pretty much just him saying that... Um, he looked at the gunslinger who saw that the boy's mouth was trembling as he strove to keep back tears. Only a boy, he thought, and pain smote him. 
the ice pick that too much cold water can sometimes plant in the forehead. Only a boy. Why? Silly question. When a boy, wounded in body or spirit, called that question out to court, that ancient scarred battle engine whose job it was to teach the sons of gunslingers the beginning of what they had to know, court would answer, Why is a crooked letter and can't be made straight? Never mind why, just get up, push ahead, get up, the day's young. Court, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Court wasn't a very nice man. No, he wasn't. But that was his job. I know. Oh. He just instilled a lot of stupid crap. But yes, pretty much my note was... Oh yeah, because mine was exactly after that. Yeah. Because why am I here, Jake asked. Why did I forget everything from before? Because the man in black has drawn you here, the gunslinger said. And because of the tower, the tower stands at the kind of power and nexus in time. I don't understand that, nor do I, the gunslinger said. But something has been happening just in my own time. The world has moved on. We say, we've always said, but it's moving faster now. Yep. Something has happened to time. It's softening. Yeah, I wrote that down too. I think I'd put a note next to it to talk about it off screen. <laughs> But but yes, I wrote that one down too because it was like, but it's moving on faster now. And I was like, hmm. Mine jumps to the next page. But I literally wrote page 157, Jake's youngness, Roland's doubt, and the description of moving on faster plus the tower. Yeah, that's what I wrote for that page. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, my next one was just the... Aileen Ritter, yes. which if you've watched any of these, you realize that they had taken her out of a segment of the new book. And it seems that she's now back in, just, just for a phrase. A small, little, almost nothing phrase. Just saying that she went with him to like a dance. Yeah. Way back when. And she was the one her parents, his parents chose for him. Yes. So apparently they were supposed to be a thing. But it never, never gets that, got that far. He also... This is where the Bible is brought up. Apparently, the Bible is was is still a big thing. Well, too. I mean, you you can gather. Well, yeah, I guess you, at I mean, this point you haven't gathered it. I, I keep thinking <laughs> much further on. Yes, it's yes. very obvious the Bible survived. <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, pretty much he's trying to describe his world, and Jake's still not getting it. So he's like, "Well, you know, you know the Bible, right?" And Jake's like. Yeah, Jesus and Moses, sure. And so then, that's right, my land had a biblical name, New Canaan, it was called, the land of milk and honey. In the Bible's canon, there were supposed to be grapes so big that men had to carry them on sledges. We didn't grow them that big, but it was a sweet land. A sweet, sweet land. And then it goes into a giant description of said land. (laughs) And also the devastating... Lower description, because it starts out really nice, and then it's like he descends into a nightmare. Because he describes the last time he saw it, which was after a great war or just whatever came through. Because I think he asks him if it was a war. He does. And my next thing is about the war. But it hurt his heart. Was, Jake asked, was there a war? Even better, the gunslinger said. There was a revolution. We won the battle and lost the war. No one won the war, unless maybe it was the scavengers. There must have been rich pickings for years after. The war. The wonderful war that could be, and I don't know what the comics 100% cover. I I don't know if they touch on that a little bit. Maybe we get a little bit more. It's like scattered, like bits and pieces, just like this, where he kind of mentions it offhand. I think that happens throughout, but I don't think... Like you said, I don't think we get a full picture of anything that really goes on. Yeah. Again, I don't know what the comics cover, and maybe they touch on it a little bit. But that would be a cool timeline to see what actually happens to the fall of Gilead. Yeah. How? And then uh, you said yours is on the next page as well? Yeah, but I believe you had something at the yours bottom. Yours was right before mine. Oh, uh, maybe so. Oh, yeah. There might have been tragedy. Nope, that's too far. 
No solution. Oh, there you go. Yep, 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 yep. There was no solution to the problem of Jake other than the one Oracle had offered. And turning away was simply not possible. Anything's possible, Roland. <laughs> Anything is possible. No, he's obsessed. <sighs> and then mine was there might have been tragedy in the situation, but the gunslinger did not see that. He saw only the predestination that had always been there. And finally, his more natural character reasserted itself, and he slept deeply with no dreams. And I just think that that's kind of the moment where, you know, the pal around has ended. Like, he now is just trying to see Jake as a boy. He's been getting closer to him and closer to him, the laughing, the snorting, the, like, buddy-buddy elbows. And I think that just kind of hit him where... He has to separate himself. And so the gunslinger side kind of just took over and it's time to get down to business. Well, I mean, we're getting to that point. I mean, there really isn't that much left of this book. No. And it's actually the next part that I wrote down was my missing entire paragraph. The next thing I have was the top of y'all. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, it's just that uh, Jake's hair had grown much longer and it curled slightly at the base of the sunburned neck. Just the fact that his hair had grown much longer. Like, how long has this been? Because <laughs> I didn't have the sense that this has been, like, a long, long time. Yeah. But it's like his hair had grown a lot, apparently. I don't know. Like, we never really get a sense of time as far as that goes. Like, Occasionally they'll mention something, but... I don't know. It's just it was odd, but as I keep saying, things funny. Uh, times funny around time, here. Yeah, times funny around here. Apparently, so, it's the same with the books. <laughs> times real funny. Um. Okay. okay, you probably have whatever's next. So the next thing I have is a strange thing, a very very strange thing. It's the one time that, besides what we just read about, the second. The, she is on wheels or she comes in on wheels mm -hmm. is this is one of the first times that I read something in the original and then I feel should have been in the newer one like why would you take out an entire piece that finally connects the older books to or the oldest book the original to the rest of them mm -hmm. and it's pretty much right at the pa bottom where They've been traveling again. They're getting closer. Uh, they... He kind of feels like Jake's getting this weird sense about him. Like, he, he knows something but just doesn't want to ask. And so... He, they stop for a night and it says, Jake was asleep beside him, but his sleep was not easy. He twisted and mumbled to himself, chasing his own phantoms. The gunslinger lay over uneasily and slept again. And then the next part immediately jumps to a week after. Well, in the original version, right before, pretty much right after he had lain down, like, rolled over, it says, They were another week before they reached the end of the beginning. For the gunslinger, a twisted prologue of twelve years, from the final crash of his native place and the gathering of the other three. For Jake, the gateway had been a strange death in another world. For the gunslinger, it had been a strange death yet. The endless hunt for the man in black through a world with neither map nor memory. Cuthbert and the others were gone, all of them gone. Randolph, Jamie DeCurry, Aileen, Susan, Martin. Yes, they had dragged him down, and there had been, a, there had been gunplay, and even that grape had been bitter. Until finally only three remained of the old world. Three like dreadful cards from a terrible deck of tarot cards. Gunslinger, Man in Black, and the Dark Tower. Yeah, something that feels very much, impl feels like it would be in the new book and maybe not in the old book. Or, like, they would keep it, but they would change those names we heard a little yeah. bit. But, no. No, it's completely not there at all. No, it's, it's missing entirely. And that is, like, the one thing that I read in the original that ties it into everything else. Yeah, it's very much 
very feels like it's it's really setting up what's going to happen at some point. I think maybe maybe he thought it was a little too much foreshadowing. I just is there such a thing with King? I, <laughs> apparently, like I'm, maybe it was just too much. But yes, that was the the last of my specific notes because the next couple pages are just. Oh, yeah, all in the moon. Just a couple pages. I throw a few things, of course, in here. Um, the very next line that would have came, a week after Jake saw the footstep, they faced the man in black. For a brief moment in time, in the moment the gunslinger felt he could almost understand the implication of the tower itself, for that moment seemed to stretch out forever. And then, of course, it jumps back again. Because oh, yeah. what, you just keep foreshadowing, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's funny, though, because, like, right after that, Jake's like, I smell him. I smell him, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't remember why I wrote that. Um, but, yeah, it's just, we're getting to imagine, okay, obviously you've, you, you've seen that much. So it's taken Ooh. us this long, and we are now finally, finally coming face to face with the man in black. Finally. Yeah, my next thing is uh, some confrontation. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, it says, um, it just kind of randomly pops out. Oh, oh, where is it? Jake was trembling violently and his face had gone pale. What's the matter? Let's go back, Jake whispered. Let's go back quick. The gunslinger's face was wooden. Please, the boy's face was drawn and his jawline shook with suppressed agony though a heavy blanket of stone had still heard thunder what i okay though a heavy blanket of stone they still heard thunder as steady as machines in the earth a slice of sky that has could do something just go for it please please the boy raised a fist as if to strike the gunslinger in the chest no the boy's face shook or right, took on wonder you're going to kill me he killed me the first time. You're going to kill me this time. And I think you know it. The gunslinger felt the lie on his lips, then spoke it. You'll be all right. And the greater lie yet, I'll take care. <laughs> Roland! We'll rip out the page. Roland! No! Jake's face went gray, and he said no more. Yes. Because mm. how that entire thing happened was it said that... He could feel the man in black was getting closer. He almost wanted to break into a run. And suddenly Jake was like, wait. <laughs> and it says, because it, it's like they faced a sharp elbow. It you said. know, something I'm surprised he hasn't added. Yeah. Uh, because it's definitely something. It comes up later in the books. And I don't want to go too far if you don't want to. Just the work, the touch. Oh, yeah. I don't think he really gives it a name in the first book. No, but, yeah. but I'm sorry he didn't get added. Yeah. Because it's something I feel like's happening here. I think maybe he waited until... I, I think he left it out of this one because... We're going to have to just talk about that later. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's, a, little, it's a little much to get into right now. Yes. But it's something very much like... Yeah. It's a mm. skill. It's a skill as a... Yes, yeah. but... Ah. Anyway. Yep, 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 But yep. yeah, so pretty much they have that little... That little tiff... Jake pretty much knows everything. He can see it. He can feel it. And he Roland tries to lie to him. And I think Jake gets it. He sees right through it. He's just like, eh. Just gives up to fate and just continues yeah. on the journey. My next note's a little, a little bit further. They got like three or four in the next page and a half. But... <laughs> yeah, the next thing we get is that they meet the, guns, uh, meet the gun in black. Or they run into him. Yes. A spray of granite puffed overhead of the man in black. A second to the left. Oh, it's a little further. Oh, that's yeah. when he shot him. Or tried or shot to at him. him. Well, he thought the gunslinger had drawn his pistol. The boy cowered to his right and behind, a small shadow. Roland fired three times before he could gain control of his traitor hands. The echoes bounced their bronze tones against the rock valley that rose around them. Over the sound of the wind and water, a spray of granite puffed over the head of the man in black. A second to the left of his hood and a third to the right. He had missed cleanly all three times. Yeah, that's not rolling. Yeah, he's not, not a man to miss. No. 
The man in black laughed, a full, hearty laugh that screamed to challenge the receding echo of gunshots. Would you kill all your answers so easily, gunslinger? Yeah, for a guy who said he needed answers from the, from yes. him, he's really just going to just kill him right here. At, at this point, it's like... Do you think I almost wish you would have. Yeah. <laughs> right here just ended it. Because it's like, when you think about it, it's like he has traveled this... In, this may not be years. weeks to you, but... Well, like you know, tw- 12 years. 12 years. Because I think 12 it's, years. It's mentioned, yeah, um, yeah. on the next page. Yeah. Traveled 12 years after this guy, and the first thing that happens when he sees him is, you're going to die. You're going to die. But the very next thing I have is at the bottom and the very top of the next page for me. It said, we'll speak on the other side, I yes. think, the man in black said. On the other side, we will hold much counsel and long palaver. His eyes flickered to Jake and added, Just the two of us. Just the two of us. <laughs> Palavering in the sky. Just the two of us. I you and I. I. I don't quite think that's... That's what he meant? And then breaking the song and like... Which would actually would make more sense. For him. Yeah. As, <laughs> as the man in black to see... For him to be more of like the jester type, you'd think he would have just broke into song. Uh, but... Yes. But yeah. Basically saying, hey, Jake. You're not going to be there. Yeah. So Jake already knows for sure. I mean, the man in black just flat out told him. The guy disappears and it says, The gunslinger exercised grim will and did not send a bullet after him. Would you kill all your answers so easily? Yeah, my little thing was, yet the man in black had stood there. Twelve years after his last glimpse, Roland had seen him up close again, had spoken to him, and the man in black had laughed. Mine, I think, the last... Oh my goodness. Yep. Yep. Two yeah. more notes. Mine was the hint when Jake looked at him and he saw the, saw, saw the face of Allie and... Where he, where the spike was in Jake's forehead was the same place that the scar, scar. was. Mm-hmm. But it says, Jake's perha- Jake perhaps caught a whiff of his thought. A moan slipped from his throat. Then he twisted his lips and cut the sound off. He held the makings of a fine man, perhaps a gunslinger in his own right, if given time. And then it echoes, just the two of us. Yep, just the two of us. Had one other tiny thing. Somewhere, right at this exact area. Put the great on the throat of blah blah blah. They dropped the water. Oh, the very literally the very last line. In the inn, there was only cock. Mine was yeah. And then I have one more note. Only one, and like right here in the middle of the last page. <laughs> so. Yeah, mine was. I, I'm pretty sure mine might be the same as yours, and it was. Just uh, mm. No one ever really pays for betrayal and silver, he thought. The price of any betrayal always comes due in flesh. It does. And of course, mine just uh, reminiscence what he says twice here. Um, Come with me or stay, the gunslinger said. It's like, and, and Jake's all like, Yeah. What, what, what am I going to do if I stay here? <laughs> Someone's just going to come by with a sandwich and be like, hey, what's that? Yeah. (sighs) What's sad, though, is that the first thing he says is, and I'll be fine if I stay. Fine all by myself. (sighs) Here in the mountains, someone will come and save me. They'll have cake and sandwiches, coffee in their thermos, too. Do you say so? Come with me or stay, the gunslinger repeated, and felt something happen in his mind. And uncoupling, coupling? And, and uncoupling. Uncoupling. That was the moment in which the small figure before him ceased to be Jake and became only the boy, an impersonality to be moved and used. Something screamed in the windy stillness. He and the boy both heard. The gunslinger began to climb, and after a moment, Jake came after. Together they mounted the tumbling rock beside the steely cold falls and stood there where the man in black had stood before them and together they entered and where he had disappeared the darkness swallowed them the end of chapter three 
<sighs> just that whole thing with him. The gunslinger ban- began to climb, and after a moment, Jake came after. It's like, dude. He doesn't have a choice. I know. He doesn't have a choice, but at the same time, it's like... He's in a strange world. He doesn't know what's going on. He has no weapons. Yeah. He has nothing he can do. Yeah. He can only go with the gunslinger, knowing that he's going to be killed. Yeah. God, it sucks. It sucks. We have now reached the depressing portion of... But yeah, there's just there's not there's just so little left in yes. the book. We are almost done. We have two chapters left, I believe. Um one fifty seven and there's only like the, two twenty, two thirty. Yes. The slow mutants and the gunslinger and the man in yeah. black. Two thirty one is my last page. So Mine is only got like seventy three pages left. That's literally the entire length of the first chapter. <laughs> or something. I have 251. Yeah. But yes, and then my original book actually has a afterword. Which you said this one does not. No, this one does not have an afterword. But there was a, a introduction and a forward in yeah. the beginning. So. <sighs> so yes, we went on quite a journey today. We've A journey that was shorter than our previous journeys. Yes. Because it was a much shorter chapter than the previous one. So. And I think the next two are, again, both going to be short chapters. So. Yes. We've met demons, we've seen the funnier side of Roland, and we've also seen how badly he needs and wants the tower. The tower is all important. We have met the man in black at last. Eh, we kind of met him yes. earlier. But Roland has finally come face to face with the man in black. The first time in 12 years. God, what a long time he chased someone. And we have found the fate of Jake. The fate of Jake. So sad. I'm just looking so forward to the next book. I, I like this book. I love the second book. The second one is definitely different. Definitely. Oh yeah, way different book. And what an opening. What an opening. But oh, I know. <laughs> We're done. That was the end of chapter three. Uh, the Oracle and the Mountains. Yes. The Moving next on one is, is The Slow Mutants. So slow mutants. Yes, which he mentioned once. He did. We didn't go over it, but he did mention yes. it once. It in was his in his past. Dis- yeah, it was this description of what happened to his home when the last time he saw it, there was slow mutants living in the kitchen. Yeah. So, which what are they? I guess that was that like zombies or something. I don't remember. I we'll get a better description yeah. in the next chapter. So well, when would they? Because I don't remember the exact description. I want to say it's kind of like. Just mutated people, because... Zombies! Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because they didn't always bother him. It was oh. just... It's kind of like how they said all the a- animals have been mutated, and yeah. like have... These people are just great. We'll get a good description in the next book. Yeah. We'll read it off. We'll, we'll, be, we'll go over it. I'm sure we will. <sighs> but no, yeah. we're not doing the next chapter. No. We definitely are. We'll definitely be there. But that is the end of chapter three. Um, we have this that comes out on Mondays. Um, tomorrow for y'all will be uh, Breaking Prisms. We'll be going over the third episode, the episode I'm looking greatly forward to. I don't remember the name of it still. We went over I it. Um, just read it. The, the entire event. history of you. Yes. So that is uh, Black Mirror episode three of the first season. Um, Thursday will be Would You If? Don't know what's going on with that yet. And Friday <laughs> is What's in the Box? Where we'll rant, rave, discuss... I don't even know. Just rambling of all sorts. So that'll be fun. Um, other than that, you can reach me at BJJ Gamer. Reach, uh, reach Amanda at KZ Pup. Reach the show at Beyond Our Focus on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And if you want to listen to this in podcast form, as audio only, we're on a whole bunch of podcast services, including Spotify. In the description below. Yep. All these links are in the description below, so you can just jump to that real quick. Make sure to like and subscribe. Like, subscribe, leave a comment of why you liked or disliked. If you disliked, don't dislike. But if you do... (laughs) um, Subliminal message. But I think that's it, unless you have something else. Nope, I think that's it. Awesome, possum. Till next time, be well.